Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Lockout Men back with another podcast interview for you guys. In today's podcast interview, I have a YouTuber, a brand new YouTuber. He hasn't been on YouTube long. He has uh, his YouTube name is Heavy Hall Nation. And I want to welcome. There we go. I want to welcome Eric to the show. How you doing, bud? What's going on, man? What's going on? Uh, where where you at right now, bro? What's what's going on in uh, in, in in your neck of the woods? Well, I'm I'm down here in some home time down in Florida right now. Been off for about two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am I am looking for a load. Actually, you kind of caught me in the middle of sitting here scoping out the load board, trying to see if I can't find something to get back out of here. Now wait a minute. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. You you in Florida, bro? Ain't 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 loads like a dime a dozen coming up out of Florida? Uh, maybe for like a reefer drive in, uh, maybe even a little bit of flatbed stuff. But on the heavy hull side, there's not really too much coming up out of Florida. There's a lot of loads coming into Florida, but it's it's real hard to get out of here once you get down here. So do so. Let me ask you this: So trying to get up out of Florida, do you have to like? If if you don't get anything up out of Florida, how far up do you have to deadhead to get something? Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, most of the time you should be able, I should be able to find it. Like, I do a lot of the windmill stuff uh, coming out of Pensacola, Florida, mm-hmm. going out west. So, I mean, I I don't have too hard of a time normally to find stuff. But the the normal freight that I normally get is pretty slow right now due to everything going on in the world. Uh-huh. But uh, we've. I, if I if I can't find a windmill piece, I'll, I'll go up to you know Georgia as far as Savannah, Georgia. I can normally get something out of there. Uh, some of the furthest I've ever gone. I mean, I've went all the way out to Texas from Florida, deadheaded out to Texas to grab something. It all really just depends on what's paying and where it's going and stuff like that. All right. So how you um how how you get into how, how did you well let me start from the beginning let me go ahead and introduce yourself and let the people know what you do all right my name's eric i uh i'm a heavy hill truck driver i run a seven axle setup i've got a four axle truck with a 51 ton three axle rgn um i also do a youtube on the side as you said i'm i'm pretty new to it I, i've had my channel for about a month now i mean it's it's moving a little faster than I expected. I've, I've got, I don't know, a little over 500 subscribers already on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but in reality, I mean, I just started that up for fun. I, I really, I just love trucking, man. I've been out on the road for about eight years, almost nine years now. I've been in heavy haul for going on five years, uh, pull, doing this four axle truck. I, I just got this four axle truck last year. So getting into the bigger stuff for the last, two years now i've been getting into the real big stuff and uh i'm just my plans haven't stopped yet i'm i'm still growing so let me ask you this how how is heavy haul differ from regular flatbed well there's uh there's a lot of differences uh flatbed is for the most part is general freight your your most of your loads are going to be legal legal weight legal width legal height things like that. I mean, you can pull oversize on a flatbed or a step deck, but, but a lot of states, they'll, uh, if it, if it can go on an RGN, you know, for height reasons or anything, they won't let, allow you to pull a permit to go on a flatbed or a step deck. So that, that's one of the biggest differences is the fact that my trailer sits so low to the ground. They, the states will only permit certain loads to go on to an RGN. And then on top of it, the weight difference, such as, you know, you can get trailers like mine, these hundred ton trailers like mine. So it, it's just the way that the trailer is built itself is what makes the difference in, in I guess, the difference between flatbed and what I do. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So, so you, by the sounds of it, you, you say you're looking for your load. So are you an owner operator or are you a lease driver or what, what are you? Yeah, I, I own my truck and trailer outright. I I don't owe any money to the bank or anything. I, I 
I've leased trucks in the past and I've done all that stuff. And I'm, I mean, for the sake of, of your viewers and whoever's listening to this, I, I recommend staying away from those lease programs because they're not very good. What, uh, what's your what's, company to, what's your experience with them? What, what, why would you well, why I, why would you say stay away from you know? I mean, I agree with you, but why would you say stay away from from uh, company leasing? What, why why would you say that? Well, when I started out, I started out with a company called Stevens Transport. Mm -hmm. Now, Stevens Transport offers their lease program, which is Basically, they tell you you're an owner-operator, and they, they lease you a truck, and you make a payment to them, but you never get to own that truck outright. Now, that that particular program, I would definitely suggest staying away from, because all you're really doing is you're paying someone else's bill at that point. You're not you're never going to own that truck. Now, I've heard of, like, Loan Mountain Leasing and companies like that where you'll own it in the end, but you end up paying almost double for what that truck is actually worth. Mm -hmm. So... My, in my experience, it's always best to go through a bank or go through your, you know, if you, if you're financially able, go out and buy a truck and trailer cash. The first truck that I ever purchased was, I mean, it was a cheap beater truck and it was just something to get, get me going. I think I paid 13 grand out the door for the truck. That's not bad. And I started my own, I started my own authority with that truck and it ended up, uh, Running my own authority was not a good choice for me at the time because I didn't have a, a lot of experience on the road. I think I had a less than a year experience when I started my, my own authority. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't have the, the experience that was required for it. So, but I had that one, that one kicker where my truck was paid for. So when I came home, I didn't have a huge bill laying over top of my head. Oh no, how am I going to pay this if I'm right, at home? Right, you know? right. Okay. So that's that's why I say to stay away from the lease program because the lease program your your bill is racking up weekly as opposed to if you can buy a truck outright or if you can finance it through a bank, at least you you only got that one month bill as opposed to your bill racking up every week with whatever company you've leased through. Now you say you started with uh you, you so this is eight years ago you started with uh with Stevens Transport. Um and did you did you go lease right away or did they talk you into going lease with them or I I did and I'm not gonna say they talked us into it, but they, they definitely made it seem like that was the way we wanted to go. And as as new drivers, new people, you know, on the road, not not understanding how everything works, that was that was what it seemed like they were trying to get us to do was lease per, or do their lease program. And it, it it's a bad system because they're getting these guys fresh out of CDL school mm -hmm. coming down there and they're trying to talk them into that. So three months into me being on the road, yes, I did, I did do their lease program and it was a very bad financial decision. So how long did you, how, how long did you go, go lease with them? Well, I was three months company and then I did the, lease and i was only there for about eight or nine months so the remainder of that so what is that six months lease mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. how 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 long you was with the company all together before you left about nine nine ten months something like that now did you get your cdls through them or did you have or did you went to a school and had your cdls already <laughs> Well, my situation was a little funny. I, I did go through them, but I, I am prior service military. I didn't realize that my GI Bill would have covered my CDL school. So I I did go through them to get my CDL. Mm -hmm. But I ended up I ended up going and, and everything got paid off within that nine, ten months so that way I could leave because they require you to stay there for a year or until your CDL school is basically paid off. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that that was all paid off so I couldn't be locked down anywhere. Because that, that's another thing that, as a driver, as a truck driver, especially a new truck driver, you do not want to feel like you're you're being pressured into anything. You want to be able to have the flexibility of, hey, I can go home or hey, I can do this. Because I'm a, the first the first year was the hardest year of my of my trucking career. That's that's about I mean, everybody. <laughs> right, and, and and it's just the adjustment is all it is. It's it's trying to adjust yourself to, to that kind of lifestyle. Cause it is, it's a different kind of lifestyle being out on the road. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you got to figure out you can't just get up from the bed and go to the shower. Now you got to get up from the from the bunk and walk a country mile to the uh to the to the shower and all like that, man. Yeah, life life out here on the road is definitely different. Definitely different, man. Um Oh yeah. So do so I'm 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 staying with the lease. Uh the type of lease that that uh that uh Stevens transport was pretty much like you renting the truck. You're you're not you're not buying the truck. You're yeah, just you're, renting it. Correct. You're you're a glorified company driver at that at that point. So in, what a, what I always told it. In your opinion, why why would one would why would one a driver would 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 do something like that? Because I mean the whole point because, of the whole point of leasing to pretty much this to own your truck you 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 actually paying to borrow their truck to make the little bit Correct. of money and, that they're and offering you're in, and you're in charge of all the maintenance uh you're in charge of your own fuel you're in charge of all that stuff so yeah they they throw these fancy numbers out in front of you i think i think at that time i was when i was a company driver i think they were paying 26 cents a mile or something like that and then they threw out this number. Hey, if you if you become a lease driver, you'll get a dollar twenty a mile. And I was like, well, shoot, obviously that's the right, right. the right choice. Right. But but then you, as a new driver, you don't realize all the expenses that come along with that, like the truck payment itself. I, I had a at the time I had a brand new uh, brand new Kenworth T six sixty, and I forget two thousand thirteen or whatever. I don't know whatever it was, and then. Uh, the payment on that alone was like six thirty eight a week. Wow. So I mean, you gotta you gotta think about okay, so that dollar that dollar twenty a mile that I'm making now with them, I've gotta run a minimum of seven hundred miles that week just to make the truck payment and that's not including my fuel plus their insurance that they have and all their other nickel and diamond stuff that they're taking from you. So you you run you run ragged as to where like and I know I'm going to jump off task here, but right now I run, I mean, I maybe run a thousand miles a week, maybe if that, you know, and I'm, I'm making Good astronomical money. numbers compared to what I was making then. Okay. So. Oh, go, go ahead. My, my suggestion, if you, if you don't mind, my suggestion yeah, to ahead. anyone listening or anyone that's new into trucking would be to go to a company that pays a percentage of the load as opposed to a rate per mile. Okay. Like, I'm going to throw this one out there. I've never been there, but I have friends that, that went there for starting companies and stuff. TMC. TMC is a great company to start with. I've heard, I've heard really good things about them from friends that have gone there. They pay you 25% as a company driver. So 25% of that load is in your pocket. You're not getting paid per mile, okay. which percentage always averages out better for you. All right, so let's uh let's jump uh let's jump eight years later. When when did you decide to get into heavy haul? Uh, practically from day one, I I I've never really I've always been an overachiever in the things that I've done. I I've always wanted to strive for more, and I've never wanted to stop. So it's it's to the point now where, like when I when I first started in this, I was young. I was, geez, I was really young. I got out of the military. At, 23 so i mean i i started trucking pretty much right after that and i i've always wanted to be the biggest baddest person on the road you know what i mean so mm -hmm. if I, I i tell everybody the day they'll put something the size of the equivalent of the titanic on my trailer that's the day i'll retire <laughs> so i'm 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 striving for the stars, man. That's that's the bottom line. I'm always striving to make myself better out here. So these uh so oh man. Um so heavy haul. Let's uh what 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 all you have to do? Well, of course, you know, doubles, triples. Uh No. No. Actually no, man. I've I've never pulled a double in my life. I've never pulled a tanker in my life. Okay. I, I saw exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this oversized stuff, so I went right for it. When I bought my first truck I also, and started my own authority, I bought a flatbed trailer. Keep in mind, I had never done anything other than pulled a reefer for a company called Stevens Transport. Mm -hmm. So 
I bought a, I bought a, my, my first truck and then I bought a flatbed trailer. And while I was getting loaded for my first load with my own authority, Mm -hmm. I was sitting there watching a YouTube video on how to secure it down. Okay. 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 That's that's how I started in my flatbed career. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've sat down at the tables at truck stops with, you know, in the diners and stuff with the, with the old timers that, that have been out here for a long time. And I, I've observed, I've listened to everything they've said. You know, I've took the good with the bad. I, every, every time someone would give me advice, I would put that to use. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just take it and then blow it off. Every time someone told me something, that went into, into some form of my trucking career. And I used that to, to help me succeed along with, with my goals, with what I plan on doing. Okay. Okay. All right. So what, uh, so what have you all talk, talk me through, uh, through the process of, uh, of, uh, of a heavy haul load. Do you have to, do you, do you have to get like permits? You have to get, uh, like those little trail cars or is all of that out of your pocket? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, all right, so some loads will come up, and you know it'll it'll say all all in rate and everything. That means that the permits and and the escorts and all that stuff's gonna come right out of that that money. So if, I'm gonna just throw an example out there. If a load says it's paying ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars, if I and it says all in, and I need to buy escorts and permits and all that stuff out of it, then yeah, that's coming out of the ten grand. But you'll run across some loads with customers, and some customers will be like, okay. This load's paying ten grand plus any permits and escorts needed. So you'll send them a receipt of your permits and escorts, and then they'll reimburse all that money for the permits and escorts. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Now you said now now when when we talked off offline and you know when we were getting to know each other, you were saying that majority of the heavy haul uh uh uh, uh trips is all during the day. Why, why is it all doing today? Yeah, the, all right, the, the government has deemed it safer for an oversized load, you know, overdimensional, meaning hanging over the sides of your trailer or over height or anything better to drive during the day because you're, you can see everything. You don't want to drive at night and you can't really drive at night to tell you the truth. But you don't you don't want to be driving at night because cars are less likely to see the load overhanging the side of the trailer. Now there is some states like Tennessee, um, there's Texas, uh, some of these Kentucky they'll they'll allow you night travel up to so wide like twelve foot wide or something. Mm-hmm. But you have to have the proper lighting. You have to have lighting on the sides of the load, on the back of the load, you know, so that way cars it's visible as cars are coming up on you. So they don't run into the side of the load. Are you guys, are you guys suggest, uh, are you guys suggested the same way as, uh, as a hazmat tanker that you guys can only go through certain places, through certain cities? Yeah, we have, uh, we have curfews, uh, in certain cities where only at certain times of the day, we can go through those cities. Uh, there's also cities that, that will actually require you to have a, a city permit. So not just a state permit, but I'm going to have to get a city or a county permit as well to go through those, those areas. And they'll have specific, all your, all your specifics will be on the permit. It will actually tell you, Hey, you can't travel through this city except for between this time and this time. Wow. So you, and, you and really got to, you really got to do clock management with, with heavy haul pretty much. Oh yeah. Uh, trip man, our trip planning is definitely a big, big deal when you're when you're going up to these permit loads and stuff like that because you don't want to run into these curfews and you're, we're still on a deadline. I mean, we still gotta make the load on our delivery at certain times because we've got we've got crane appointments we've got to hit and if we miss those crane appointments, that gets charged back to us. So we definitely we definitely are still on a, a deadline for everything and and we do have to trip plan like crazy for this stuff. Oh man. Okay, but it does in all in all actuality it does pay it does pay good I take it uh how many actual how how many actual loads in a week that that you that you actually do uh, 
could could I do? <laughs> oh, could I you mean, do? That, that's like a that's like a that's like a two sided question there. I mean, what I choose to do and what I could do is two totally different uh, things. Okay, well, I what would you I, choose I'll, to I'll do? Run, I'll I'll run about a load a week. You mean one load? I mean, one load a week would be that good for you financially? Without breaking into the numbers, it's 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 pretty good, man. It's wow. pretty good, man. I uh, I'll put it this way: I'm I'm I got to well, I don't want to say it like that, but I was actually at home for eleven weeks during this whole pandemic, and. I wasn't stressing about anything. Oh man, that's that's fucking that's fucking awesome right there, man. So you so, you can actually so without, and, and I'm not trying to seem. Please don't think that way. I'm not trying to seem like a like a jerk or anything on here. So, oh, this guy's flaunting that stuff. No, that's not me at all. I'm just letting you know it it does it does pay to to get into this if anyone's striving to get into this. Okay, so. So that's what I was about. That's that was my next question I was going to ask. So as for New Jack, uh, how would how would it how would he get into heavy haul? Do we have to do do? Let's say I have like two years of experience over the road driving already up under my belt. Uh, do I have to have more experience to to do heavy haul, or can I just? find a company and if so where would i go to find said companies all right this is kind of a, a double-sided question as well i i've got a video out that actually explains how i how i got into it mm -hmm. my whole life as, as a truck driver and the way i explained it in my video was was basically through my life what i did i, I told everybody in, in the video exactly what i just told you i you know i started with stevens I, I bought my own truck got my own authority didn't do good with my own authority ended up leasing onto another flatbed company mm -hmm. basically the bottom line is experience to get into heavy hull if, if you want to if you want to get into doing heavy hull work and and striving to do this you have to start on a flatbed or a step deck the open deck is where to start you need to learn how to secure things down you need to learn and it's all for safety reasons i mean you don't want to go out and, okay, I've got a year experience, but I've been driving a box trailer for for the last year. Now I'm going to go and jump into an RGN or a double drop or, even, or anything like that, and I'm going to go pull oversized loads because you don't, you don't have the experience on how to secure loads down. And it all boils down to experience. I, it's to, to the point where – if you want to get into heavy haul, I would say go out and get a flatbed job, or or buy a flatbed, or whatever the financial experience or financial circumstances in in your life, and buy a flatbed or go to a flatbed company and start with them. And and any oversized load that pops up, whether it be eight foot seven inches wide, or it be ten foot wide, or even bigger, go and haul those loads for the experience. Okay. I, I'm going to tell you personally, my for for about two years, man, I was taking cheap loads. I was doing, and it was all because I wanted to have the experience of the oversized load. So I was taking cheap loads, even they were oversized loads, but they were they were dirt cheap, man. They weren't paying what they should have been paying, but I was doing it for the experience. So that way, when I had a had an opportunity to get where I'm at now, or even go bigger. I have the experience to back it up. What do you say? What, so, what do you say to the What do you say to the old timers that's out here fighting for, fighting for good brokerage rates? Uh, what do you say to them when they see you trying to get your experience by hauling cheap freight or cheap uh, oversized and, freight? And that that's the bottom. Well, the thing when I say cheap, I'm not saying cheap as in like it was paying what swift rates are or anything right right i was when i say cheap i mean i mean cheap as opposed to what what it should be paying mm -hmm. so cheap meaning cheap is not like i'm going out here and cutting people's throats and stuff no that's just what it was offered for and i couldn't talk them up anymore so i would just take it just so i could have the experience oh, okay okay that's what's up that's what's up uh what is so how do you 
how do you get the permits, man? I mean, uh, do you have to have like, well, you know, this is the millennial, so you know, we we have to have some type of computers in our in our trucks, you know, tablets, uh, cell phones, technology in 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 the trucking field. Y- you you gotta have it, you know. But how yeah, how do you go absolutely. how how do you got how do you go by getting the permits like? Do you get them faxed to you? Do you get them emailed to you? How how that work? All right. Um, so when you want to get a permit now, as an owner operator, as a if if I had my own authority and I was doing everything on my own, they do have permit services out there you can call such as Comdata, T Check, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or you can do it yourself and you can call state by state and just order your permit through them and they will email it to you. Oh, okay. Now, I don't, can I say the company I'm leased to right now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. So I'm leased to Landstar right now. We actually have our own permit services Mm -hmm. through Landstar. So I'll call them and I'll tell them, hey, where I'm starting, where I'm going, and what route I want. And they will get me the closest route that that state will allow me to get. And then they'll email me the permit. And then the permit costs and everything end up just coming out of my settlement, out of out of what that load pays. Oh, okay, okay. So it's it's all basically billed to Landstar first, and then billed back to me. Okay, all right. So that's how that works. Okay. Um, how much? How much uh, do it usually cost you uh, for permits? Um. Well. Or do they right, vary? So- yeah, it, it varies big time. Uh, the the over width permits, if, as long as I'm still legal weight, the over width permits and over height permits really aren't too bad, but it varies state by state. Mm-hmm. Now, if you start getting overweight, states will actually charge you per mile per ton your overweight or or however that state does it. But I mean, I've I've had permits as high as you know seven eight hundred dollars just for one state. So, I mean, permits do get pretty pricey. It just depends on what you're hauling and, and if it's just, you know, if it's legal weight or if it's overweight. The overweight permits are the ones that start getting pretty expensive. Wow. Do you have to go through scales? Absolutely. I mean, there's been some loads that I've done that are, you know, they're way too wide to get in and, and we, we sit so low to the ground that I've called the scale masters ahead of time and, and they said, hey, go just go on by. Now, they'll they'll tell us if, if we can't fit in there and they want to still come in and show our paperwork and stuff, they'll tell us, Hey, just park on the ramp or something. Mm-hmm. But I've never had, I've never had one do that. Oh, okay. I mean, tell you the truth. DOT is, they, they understand, man. They're, they're not out here to, to hurt us, man. They're just doing their job, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> I have a uh, fortunate, you know, fortunately I, I always have good uh, experiences with, with all my DLTs. I I only had maybe one right. I had one bad experience, but that was because the the driver tech of the company I was working for, the driver tech was out and that was the only bad experience. But other than that, it was, it was a pretty good experience. I mean, I, you know, made sure did my pre trip and, yeah, and all that. I've good had stuff. one my I've had one bad experience myself, but it wasn't even BOT officer's fault. It was my own fault for not paying attention to my permit. Mm-hmm. I rolled into a into a way station, and uh, the my permit, all my other permits, started that day that I was that I rolled in there, except for this particular state. And the, that state ended up starting the next day. Well, I rolled into that way station, and because my permit said the day after I was actually there, start date. And uh, they ended up giving me a twenty thousand dollar ticket because I was overweight and everything, and I didn't have a I didn't have a valid permit at the time. So, but it wasn't like I said, it wasn't the DOT officer's fault. He was just doing his job. I should have paid attention. Did you? My permit company messed up. And did you? Did Did you pay the? Did Did that come out of your pocket, or did the company? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But but it 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 got dry. I mean, it got cut down a lot, but. It all went to court and everything got cut down a lot, but I did still have to pay a pretty good chunk. Now, let me ask you so. this before we get up out of here, uh, since you mentioned the court part. Uh, would it be safe to say that we should get uh, some type of uh, some type of attorney services uh, before we start doing heavy haul, just in case? 
Yes and no. I mean, if you're out on your own, absolutely. But if you're if you're with a company like like I am, they actually they actually fought it for me. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so they yeah they went and fought it for me, and then and it ended up getting reduced. It, it got reduced down to a tenth, so I only had to pay two grand instead of the twenty. Mm-hmm. But it's still it's it it just shows that you got to pay attention to all that paperwork that they give you. I mean. If you don't pay attention, you can run into little headaches like that and financial setbacks. All right, Eric. So, what advice do you do you got for for the new jacks out here that's that's thinking about that's thinking about getting their own authorities, that's thinking about uh, buying their trucks, that's that's thinking about heavy haul. What what advice you got for them? Oh man, well. If you wanna if you wanna go into that, that's gonna be a long winded thing. Oh, but go I can ahead. tell you <laughs> I guess I, I guess uh experience is the biggest thing, man. If you if you wanna go out and do this stuff and, and you wanna be just experience and and safety. I mean, I just installed a whole new camera system on my truck. I got a camera looking forward, cameras looking down both my mirrors all the way to the back of the trailer. I've got a camera on the back of the sleeper now. I've also got one on the back of the trailer. And that's all for safety reasons in case, you know, someone else hits me or something. So that way nobody can blame me for hitting them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, it all boils down to, to being safe on the road, being courteous. I mean, DOT officers, they're not out here to, to harass us or anything. Yeah, sometimes uh, you'll run into that one guy that's just having a bad day. But just smile, man. It's, it's, it's all a game. It's all a cat and mouse game. So just come out here, do your job, keep your head down. Keep on rolling and experience that. That is the biggest thing. Do not try and rush into anything. Cause like I said, you could be like me and end up sitting at a shipper waiting to get loaded and sitting there looking at a YouTube video, trying to figure out how to secure this load down. All right. It, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It ends up. Go ahead. No, you're good. It ends up, uh, it ends up just being, all about experience, man. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Eric, man, thank you for coming on and uh sharing your experience with me, man. I know you're a busy uh I know you're a busy man and you you know you got your you, you mentioned that you gotta go and pick up your kid. But I, I thank you so much for coming on right quick and uh sharing your experience. Uh where where the people can find you at, man? Hey, go on uh go on YouTube, type in Heavy Hold Nation in the search bar, you'll find me. All right, all right. Right now I'm sitting at like one, two, three, four, and five in, in the heavy hold search. So All right, all right. What about uh what about Instagram? You 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 on Instagram somewhere or are you just rocking YouTube yeah. right now? Yes, sir. I got I got uh Instagram is heavy underscore hull underscore nation. Man, what's up with Facebook, this? Facebook, heavy hull nation. What's up with this so, what's up with this underscore stuff, man? So it's heavy heavy underscore underscore nation nation in 18 no it's heavy oh. underscore hall oh, they, underscore nation there you go i found you i found you there you is now i just hit that follow button so all right so for people that uh that want to check them out definitely check them out on uh youtube uh at heavy hall nation and check them out on heavy hall heavy underscore hall underscore nation on instagram you know you guys go and uh check this gentleman out uh so eric man i appreciate it again thank you for coming on thank you for sharing if you guys want to come on and holler at your boy and share your experience by all means drop a line to me hit me up in the gmail that's lockout me podcast at gmail.com or you can hit me up in the instagram over in the dm or text me six zero zero two zero Wait, is that two one six six zero zero two zero nine zero? I gotta hit that uh, <laughs> gotta hit that uh area code so you guys can find me. But anyway, um, if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. I am your host, Lockout Men. This is my DJ about to play me out. Who is that DJ like that? Thanks to uh, Eric for coming on. Thanks to you guys for watching. And if you guys want to come back for more, just wait for the next video. On that note, Lockout Men and Eric, 
We are out of here. Peace.